Hi there, welcome to this um, video, uh, Anton video. We're going to talk to you about the Sprint Pro, the, the range of Sprint Pro, um, and basically how to turn it on, how to use it. Um, so it's a bit of a how-to if you've got one of these recently, whether you've got an, an older Anton, you want to know what's different about this, but more, more importantly, if you're coming to us from maybe one of our competitors, um, you're not familiar with it, this is kind of like a an online um, sort of video that really can help you to sort of understand all the functions, make sure you get the most out of your bit of kit that you've just uh, invested in. So um, yeah, there's some, going to be some contact details at the end. If you've got any other questions, you can get in touch and ask us. But fundamentally, we're going to go through some of the, the basics really of how to use it and how to get the most out of it, how to look after it, um, the sort of do's and don'ts. So let's get into some of that detail. Okay, so as explained, I'm going to go through the Sprint Pro here, how you turn it on, how you use it, where all the connectors are, basically, yeah, a little bit more about the instrument. So, um, excuse my strange camera position here. Um, it's sort of middle of the COVID situation and I'm working from home alone. So, um, yeah, I've had to set up my camera above and hopefully you can see everything I'm trying to show you here and, um, yeah, you get the, get the idea. Anyway, so, obviously you get a bag uh, with your analyzer. Uh, it looks like this. The idea with the bag is it's got a compartment for all your different bits and pieces. Um, I'll go through that in a second, but let's focus for the minute on the, um, the analyzer itself. Um, so a simple thing, this, obviously you've got a number of buttons here. These three buttons will correlate to, when we turn it on in a second you'll see, there's normally three icons on the screen here, it's a colour screen so it's nice and clear, but each of these buttons will relate to one of the icons along on the screen here. And you've got an escape button to come back a page and a return button to sort of select what you're uh, or to, to enter a page. Um, obviously there's your screen, this is very easy to use um, and yeah on the back you've got your connectors for your flue gas analyzer probe, um, you've got your pressure ports here, you've got a positive and a negative pressure port, um, positive is slightly to the left, pressure slightly to the right as indicated on the back here um, and you've got your, if you've got temperature um, clamps they, they plug in here onto the, these are K-type thermocouples. Um, so the first thing you need to know is how to turn it on. Oh, and on the back you've got your um, your uh, serial number label um, and Pro 3, uh, like, like um, well this is actually a Pro 6, but there's Pro 3s. Um, if you've got Pro 3 and above, you've got the pairing code here for when you're looking at the Bluetooth side of things. Um, so yeah, and then calibration date. Mine's actually due calibration again because it's uh, COVID. Um, it's actually, you know, I'm, I'm only using it for sort of demonstrations anyway but um yeah it's actually elapsed I, I do need to get this one calibrated but you'll see that when it when it's all turned on and we go into flue gas mode in a minute um so that's the, the basic instrument um magnets on the back so it sticks nice and tight they're really good strong magnets and this is a really nice flat rubberized surface on the back so it does stick really really well to the to the um you know the appliances you, you hopefully thought they're steel case there's, there's some um plastic case um, boilers out there now aren't they but uh, yeah metal case or steel case boilers it will obviously grip very nicely to that um, okay so the first thing to do this is your on off button you hold it down and it will tick or it, you'll, if you uh, only hold it down for one sort of bleep it won't turn on I'll demonstrate that oh I hit the two <laughs> so yeah if as long as you hit two it'll turn on if you don't hold it down for long enough it won't turn on if you hold it down for too long it won't turn on that's just to stop it to getting knocked on in the bag or in the van or whatever and, and turned on accidentally and, and running its battery down um, so as, as you can see um, this is actually uh, yeah a nice new bright color screen and this is what I was saying earlier this relates to the icons above it so we've got a tick here to say yes yeah, select that option and then you've got up and down to just scroll up and down the menu so I'll go into the test menu first and then we'll come back and look at these other these other um, menus later. But as I said, escape takes you back a page. That takes you into the sort of home page where it shows your serial number and that sort of thing. Press escape again and you go back to your, your main menu here. You will see on the front screen the time and date um, and when the cow's due. So yeah, mine's, mine's overdue by a month. So when I go into flue gas in a minute, you'll see that um, it, it, will, it will warn me of that. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, next thing then, um, I'm gonna show you how to attach the flue probe before we get into anything else. So, um, if I pop that down for a second. So in the bag, I've got a slot here for my flue probe. Um, this is what the flue probe looks like. Um, obviously, you've got the, the end you stick in the, uh, in the actual um, 
boiler itself in the inspection cap or whatever and we've got a um, an adjustable depth gauge cone on there to obviously that will seal on the different size inspection caps that you might might be putting it into really important when you are inserting this into a flue um, think about the flue as a obviously these concentric flues now you don't want to be banging it into the inside wall of the flue because it's a condensing flue that will be, be condensed running down the um, inside of that flue Obviously, if you push that right against that wall, you'll start sucking water into here. Um, what you want to be doing is try and get the, you know, the tip of the flue probe in the middle of the flue so that you're actually sampling flue gas. Not, you'll still get flue gas if you hit it into the other wall, but you'll, you'll effectively end up with a lot more condense collecting in your condense trap than is necessary if you've got it banged up against the inside wall. So try and keep it somewhere in the middle of the flue to take a, a, a gas sample rather than sucking water in. Um, but you know, your, your depth gauge will help you adjust that and hold that in the right position. A little dial on there, obviously, to slide that up and down and lock it in place. Other than that, it's got a nice little handle. Um, some of you will have kits with a bent probe. If you've, um, if you've got one of those with the bent probe, I think um, yeah, it's, it's well worth having. So that's for, for difficult access, because this has to be a certain length for the British standard. So we, um, we do a bent probe to allow you to get into tight spaces. So if you've got a boiler like mounted inside a kitchen cabinet, um, obviously you, you've all experienced it, it's quite hard to get your flue probe in, if not impossible. So the bent probe you've got will, uh, if you've got one of those, will obviously uh, allow you access. And um, yeah, that's that. So the other end, obviously you've got your, your flue probe, uh, your flue hose. The other end, we've got the, um, the, the water trap and condensed trap. So this is a really, really important part of the overall design of the flue gas analyzer. Um, this is where a lot of the filtration is housed and obviously it's got your condense trap for actually collecting any condens that might be sucked in and, or, or, or form um, as it sort of cools as it comes up these tubes. So keep an eye on this, it's best to keep it emptied at all times. Um, so when you start getting a bit of moisture in here, do use a cloth, I carry a sort of a cloth with me for getting in there and drying it out. Um, and, and rather than it being in the back of the instrument like some of our competitors top or bottom um, we, we prefer to have it in line because it allows you to get and really dry this out thoroughly so this is now on a, um, a knurled nut so you undo the nut the two halves come apart and that allows you to really get in with a cloth and, and dry the whole thing out once, you know, every, every now and again once you start getting some condents in here well I've got it apart talk to you about the filters so we've got this divide central dividing piece um, and then we've got the two filters in here. So the first thing you've got is a sponge filter. Rather than the paper filters we used to use when they get wet, because they will get, not, get wet, not if they get wet, when they get wet, um, you can actually uh, dry these out. So again, if they do get wet, you get your cloth or your bit of paper towel or whatever, give it a ring out and it will, um, you know, you can reuse it, run like a paper one that tends to be um, useless once it's got wet and it starts to break down. The other thing to note is this filter here, this is a really clever and important filter. You, you've got to have it in place when you're using it. This is a hydrophobic filter, and that long word basically means it's a water barrier. It doesn't let water past um, this disc. So effectively, as soon as any water moisture droplets touch this sort of, um, well, it looks like a filter, but it's a filter paper, but it's basically a gauze. It blocks itself, so no air can pass through it, and it basically stalls the pump. Um, there's a video that you can link to um, We'll put a link in the description, perhaps, or um, but you can find it. Um, yeah, it, it shows us sort of basically filling the whole system with water. It hits this, it stalls the pump. Um, so if you get that and you get a, a a warning come up, there'll be a big orange warning come up on the screen, say pump lock, check check um, probes and filters. That's probably what it is. It got some moisture on this. It stalled the pump and it stops it sucking more moisture into the instrument because that's the thing that damages analyzers. It's water getting in these, it's condensed getting into them. So by, by having this, basically the idea is you can either sort of blow it back out. Excuse my top of my head there, but you can, um, yeah, you can blow it out. But if you can't blow it out and clear it that way with all the kits, you do get another spare filter. So you can put that one back into the uh, filter trap don't throw that one away, it will just dry out and it'll be usable again, but it's done its job, it's stopped moisture getting into the instrument. Much easier to swap that out than it is to obviously have to send your analyzer away for, for repair. Um, so yeah, putting all that back together, once you've dried it all out, just push that in there, the filter sits in on top, and then you can see that, that carrier sits in the middle and it all 
it goes back together and that bayonet screws tight again all the way down so you've got a nice airtight um, water trap so that's the filtration is really really good on pro and it's something we're really proud of and it's really stopping us from getting a lot of um, you know problems with people getting water into their instrument and, and causing them problems this end we've got the thermocouple so obviously when you're ready to use it for, for flue gas analysis you plug that in it doesn't matter which side actually you can plug it in either side and then we've now got this uh, connector so this connects into the instrument like so if you can see that and it just pushes clunks fit and then I, I, I can't pull it out so it stops it dropping off little button to release it but it basically it clicks in like that so you're now ready to start taking flue gas readings um, just so you know there's another one of those hydrophobic filters in the end of this so whilst that should always be there because that's easily swappable worst case scenario we've got a second line of defense in here um, that you can't obviously connect into the instrument without that connection so you're always protected against water damage and moisture damage which is really really important um, so yeah once you're up, 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 up and connected then you can do your um, start the flue gas analysis so uh, I'm just going to take a quick breather and we'll come back to that in a second Okay, so just to recap, we're in test menu. You can go up and down. I want to choose test menu, select test menu, and there I am in the test menu. So this is where I can choose the different, um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, this is where in test menu, I can choose the different type of functions in the analyzer. So again, up and down to choose the one you want. I'm going to go through this in order, but we'll start with flue gas analysis. As I've already done, I've connected up my instrument so that when I go into flue gas analysis and it does its initial purge or, or, or start up and zero, I'm actually purging the whole system. So any, any old residue flue gas that might still be in the system, I'm purging out before we do the zero. So that's quite important. So yeah, always sort of turn it on with your probe connected. Um, so go into flue gas analysis. So it says on here, ensure probe fitted and I think uh, water trap empty. So that's, that's just sort of a good thing to do. Confirm them in clean air. Obviously, I am here. This is just uh, my front room, actually. But um, you know, if you're on site, you don't want to be up close to the, to the boiler when you do this. You want to be either putting your flue probe out the window into fresh air, or, or ideally outside. You know, so you're definitely in clean air. But once you're in clean air, you press the button to confirm you're in clean air, and now we start going through the zero process. Um, as I said earlier, this is a Pro Six, so it's a fully populated one with NO and CO2 sensors. So it takes slightly longer. But um, you know, you, if you've got a Pro 3 uh, or Pro 1 or Pro 2 or something like that, you'll only have the CO and the oxygen that'll be, that'll be zeroing. So you are, that's now zeroed, and now I'm in flue gas mode. I'm ready to go and start take readings. Um, it really is that straightforward. The front page that we've got here um, shows you, you know, the most popular or most commonly needed information. So the oxygen reading, the CO, the CO2 and the ratio. We've also got pressure reading. So if you want to take some pressure hose, there's my pressure relief valve, which I'll talk about in a second, but you can connect that up, push it onto your pressure spigot, and you can actually be taking a pressure reading whilst you're doing your flue gas analysis. So um, for certain boilers, I think that's needed. It's not, not most of the time, but if you need to take a, a working pressure and operating pressure at the same time as your flue gas analysis, you can do it. And that button, so you see, the, remember the button corresponds to the yellow button below it, so that's, that's pressure equals zero. So if I want to zero my pressure, I can do that so that I'm, um, yeah, I know I'm sort of zeroing my pressure before I start um, taking any pressure measurements. This number one means it's page one. So if I press the, the enter button, it will scroll through the pages. Um, so the next page I've got the O2 again, excess air, the flue temperature and the efficiency. Uh, in the tip here of the flue probe, I've obviously got a thermocouple. Um, so if I sort of warm that a bit with my fingers, there you go, you see the flue temperature starting to rise as I warm it up to body temperature. Um, the efficiency on this is different as well. It, it will automatically know if it's a high efficiency boiler or a standard efficiency boiler from the flue temperatures and the, and the flue gas readings. So the calculations are slightly different, whether it's a high efficiency or a standard efficiency appliance. And on high efficiency appliances, you can get above 100% efficiency, believe it or not, because of the heat reclaim. 
Um, so don't think there's something going wrong if you've got um, one of these and it shows over 100% efficiency. It's actually correct. It's measuring it correctly um, and it is, yeah, over 100% is possible. Um, if it's on standard efficiency, if you're on standard, you know, non-high efficiency appliance, it won't get above 100, but it will remain in gross rather than, um, or, you know, in, in high efficiency mode. Um, if I press it again, now I get everything on one page. So you've got O2, CO, CO2, the ratio, excess air, fluid temperature, efficiency, and the pressure all on the one page. Um, and then if you, I, because I've got a Pro 6 here, I'm also getting my NOx readings and CO2 readings. Most people wouldn't have that. Um, but then you get to this page, which is fluid temperature, um, inlet, and the um, ambient. Um, there you go, and then the differential, uh, in case you're interested. So that's flue gas, really. When, when you've got a reading, obviously this is just measuring fresh air, but when you've got a reading, what you can do is you can, okay, so I'm in um, Bluetooth mode at the moment, and I'm gonna show you the printer, first of all. So this is the printer that, depending on which kit you got, comes with it. Um, okay, so if I wanna get into printer mode, and I'm in, um, yeah, Bluetooth mode at the moment, if I long hold that, I've now switched it, I don't know if you can see that. I long hold it, I switch between printer mode there and Bluetooth mode. Long hold it again, back to printer mode. So what that means is, if I just pop this down, if you want to take a reading, turn on the printer, you align it so that they're roughly next to one another, and then I press the printer button, and out comes my report. Uh, and obviously if I want to take a duplicate of that, I can do that by pressing the printer button again. Um, equally, if you want to use um, the Bluetooth functions and you want to send the data to the Bluetooth, you long hold and instead of printing printer, you press Bluetooth. Obviously, you can save the readings as well. So you can, if you press the middle button, that disk icon is sort of a, a save button. You can see that. So I press save, it's saying, right, do you want to store the logs, a flu log? It'll be vlog number 27. Yes, I do. And that now save that into my log. So I can then print it or, um, or Bluetooth it at a later date. Um, and then there you are, so that holds it on screen like that. That's saying there, that blue line showing log 27, when it's taken it, and it holds it on screen. Press escape, I'm back into normal measurement again. So it, it's just a normal measurement. So you can take, you know, you could save um, your flu integrity test, uh, high and a low, um, you know, flu gas test, and then save them all into the log, Bluetooth or print them as often as you like then. Fundamentally, that is flu gas mode. Um, it's as easy as that really. Escape comes out of the screen and goes back a page. There you are, it's a little reminder saying replace inspection cap. So we, we put little features into the software that try and help you to, um, you know, remember to put your caps back and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's gone a bit quieter again, that's good. All right, so again, next mo mode down is pressure mode. So I'm not using flue gas now, so I can detach this. Um, what I would recommend is when you turn it off normally, um, then basically, yeah, you want to um, be turning it off with the flu probe attached because it does another purge on shutdown and it'll just purge. It's only 10 seconds, but it's just sort of, t it might take any out of um, excess sort of flu gases out of the probe. So always worth having the flu probe attached when you turn the instrument off. Uh, but for the de demonstration, I'm gonna run through this without it attached. Um, pressure menu. So again, if I press the tick to go into it, so again, I've got different pressures that I can do here. Let by tightness test, just take, you know, pressure, just take a pressure reading. Differential pressure, draft pressure, working pressure, operating pressure. So again, up and down to select the one I want. Let's run through a let bind tightness test. So let's um, put this on the positive pressure spigot. Okay, so for those of you who are not sure what this is, this is a pressure relief valve. So what you would do is you would go to your meter, open it up, obviously get the 23 millibar, or whatever the, um, the standing pressure is at the, at the meter. And what you can do is then, you can open this little bleed valve here to bleed it down to the 20 or 10 millibar starting pressure that you want to um, get to. So yeah, nice, really handy little tool, very useful for when you're doing your, your let bind tightness tests. So first thing, get that attached, go into let bind tightness test mode. Um, and here we are. Um, again, you've got that pressure zero function before you start if you want to. So you can zero it in, in air like this. Pop it on your um, 
Well, you all know how to do a let by tightness test. You don't know, need to teach how to do that. But once you're ready and you're set up and you've got your starting pressure, um, obviously, again, this is no pressure because it's ambient, but you press start and it's time. So the duration shows on the bottom there, um, five, six, and so on. Obviously, when you get to the minute or whatever it, whatever time you're, you're testing it for, you've got your start pressure, your finish pressure, and it'll show the differential, the, i.e. the difference between the two. So at the end of that minute, you'll look at the readings and think, so you'll stop it at the minute. I've obviously stopped it a bit early. Pass or fail, you've got, you know, again, these buttons relate. So if, it, if you're happy with the readings and you say, yeah, that's passed, it's let by test, you can press the green tick. It then allows you to set up for stabilization. So again, get set up for stabilization. Um, again, press start when you're ready. Stop when you're, when you're finished. I think it's another minute for stabilization on domestic, isn't it? Um, again, I've only done six seconds, but you get the idea. Uh, I'm gonna pass it again, because it was all fine. And then you can go, again, set, set up for your, let by, your tightness test, hit start, two minute test. At the end of that two minutes, you can stop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail it just, just to show, because obviously this was rubbish readings anyway. But it, obviously if it passed, you hit pass, and you, you'll basically be able to save a, uh, you know, a, a passed let by tightness test in your, um, in your memory, or you can print it, or you can Bluetooth it. But if you fail it, you hit the red button. It says failed. I'm gonna save that as a, as a log. Um, so again, I can print it or we'll Bluetooth it later. And now I'm ready to, to sort of send that to my printer um, or, my, or my Bluetooth, depending on what you're doing. Um, but it does store, um, when, you, when you print it, um, it shows you the different you know, readings for the let by the stabilization. Again, I'm hitting through the, the pages here with the return button, tightness test. Um, and that all prints out on one, on one ticket so that it's all there to, to see which, which bits passed, which bits failed. Hopefully they all passed. Um, it's as simple as that, really. Again, escape to come out of there. Reseal test point, there you go. Um, again, if you go into just the pressure, that's just a live reading. So it's just basically like using the U-gauge, but it's a digital version. It just gives you a live pressure. Um, it does tell you how long you've been taking the pressure test just from when it started. But, um, you know, it's basically just, uh, if I blow on it, it just gives you a live reading, basically. Um, Again, reseal test point. If I go down to differential pressure, um, yeah, again, you need um, obviously two, two on there and you hit start and um, yeah, you can, you can measure that. And then draft pressure, working pressure. It's all fairly self-explanatory, but um, with the working pressures, operating pressures, you can save it again um, you can, as a log, you can print it, you can Bluetooth it. So then you get a specific ticket that says working pressure, operating pressure, whichever. Um, you're doing um, okay differential temperatures right that's the uh, the pressure menu okay if I go to bag again and depending on your kit you can get some um, clamps provided um, so they obviously come as a pair okay and then they can go into the the two sockets here so it doesn't matter if you connect these up well either way around it, it you know it, it will work out which is positive and which is negative you know, all your flow and return um, obviously the the flow will always be the warmer of the two so it doesn't matter which way around you connect them this will work out which is your flow which is your return so if i go into differential temperature you see you've got t1 t2 if i warm one up i don't know which it is just get my finger on the the sensor there there you are, so for T1, it's going up and it shows you the differential, okay? But once again, you can save it, you can Bluetooth it, you can print it if you need to keep a record in exactly the same way. Uh, but yeah, simple as that. And you can plug in, obviously these are the, the typical sort of clamps you might use. We do Velcro cl clamps. Uh, you can put liquid binder probes in and you know surface temperature probes, all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, and that's, that's basically where would you, you would use those in the temperature section. If I go into room safety, it's going to bring the pump on again because it's basically a function of flue gas analysis. So uh, with ours, what you do is, if you know you're going to be testing, say, a, a CO room test for a cooker, okay, you go in, you choose cooker. So again, you use these buttons up and down to choose the one you want. Choose cooker. Um, and it actually tells you, if I go through the pages, the test parameters. So it's a, a 30 minute, oh no, sorry, an allowed parts per million of 30 ppm. Um, you're allowed... 20 minutes above that 30 ppm and the test time minimum is 20 minutes and the test time maximum is 30 minutes. 
So it tells you the test parameters, so you don't have to go away and find your British standard and remember what they all are. It actually, on, on one of the pages here, it tells you what the pass and fail parameters are. Um, but when you're ready to start, um, you know, you, you've got it all set up on your tripod. Again, you stick your flu probe in, connect it all in. When you're ready to go, press start and you've got your timer there. The stop button won't come up until the minimum duration has been um, shown. So obviously, hopefully in here I've got no parts per million of CO, which I haven't, which is good. Um, but if, if you've got some CO, it would read on here, it would show you the maximum you've seen the peak CO and it will show you the duration of the test. So that's the current CO, the peak it's seen and the duration. So if it was at 15 and you can see it's coming back down again because it's now, uh, sorry, it's now at eight and it was at 15, you can see that it's coming back down again. All that help, information helps you when you're deciding if it's a pass or fail at the end of the test. Um, but it, as I say, it won't let you stop the test until it's done, it's completed. So um, the only thing I can do, if I press escape, I can quit the test, but it automatically makes it a failed test because I haven't, I haven't basically completed the test to the British standard, which is in this case, a, a minimum of 20 minutes, a maximum of 30 minutes. Um, but if it can reach the 20 minutes, you can then stop it, save it, pass it, fail it, whatever you choose to do, again with the green and red um, you know, pass and fail buttons. Um, but again, that'd be different for um, the, the different so space heaters, room heaters, um, you know, boilers, it, it's, the test parameters are already in there, which is really, really helpful. Um, sweep test, this is a new one um, that again, you do as a flue gas, function of flue gas. So you connect up your flue probe again, but this time what you do is you, you sweep around the appliance looking for products of combustion. So again, it tells you the maximum you can see is um, 10 parts per million of CO. I'm currently seeing none. Um, and, and you know it allows you to go around and, and do that test. I think it's a two minute test. You hit start when you're ready and away you go, do your testing and, and make sure you're not finding products of combustion. So again, refer to your British standard for that, but that, that um, new, it's a relatively new sweep test. It's in the software for you to use if you choose to. I'm gonna quit the test. Okay, um, there we go. So ambient air monitor, again, that is just um, if you want to do some longer tests for things like CMDDA1. Um, there's another video on that I'll refer you to because it's, it's not complicated but it takes a little while and you're probably not most people aren't going to use that so we'll, we'll come away from that for, on this occasion but it's there if you're doing longer CO and or like mine's got the CO2 sensor fitted so I can do ambient CO and CO2 testing with that, that function. Gas escape detection um, again assuming you've got it in your kit um, this is the new gas leak detector um, it's got a thinner head for getting into tighter spots. It's been completely redesigned and reworked so that um, the battery consumption is much, much lower on this unit than the old one. So this uses a third of the old battery power the, um, of the V and the Evo gas leak detector. But it works in the same way. It plugs into the socket here, if you can see that. Um, you go into gas escape detection mode. Uh, it says ensure one disconnected, which obviously mine is. A little light in the end, if you can see that, to help you see in the dark. It's just checking the sensor. Um, it takes about 30 seconds to settle and warm up. And then once you've done that, you're basically reading gas. Um, and again, it's got a, a it's, it's, it doesn't give you an exact like parts per million or, or percent volume of, of flammable gas, but it gives you an indication of how much you're seeing. So low through to medium through to high. Uh, and, the, and there's a color band that comes across. And um, yeah, and it ticks as well. The, the, the higher the gas level, the, the more it ticks. So it's a really useful little tool if you've sort of failed a lip on tightness test or the tightness test, say, and you, you, you want to know, um, you know, it can help you find leaks quickly. Confirm you're in clean air, I am, and there we are, we're, we're now in use. Um, and then when you've finished with gas escape, you found your leak, you literally just press escape and you come out of that. It's as simple as that. So that's, that's the sort of core of the instrument. That's really how to use it. Um, if I press escape again, I'm back into this main menu. So um, if you're working on different um, fuel types, you can go to fuel options and then select the fuel type you're working on. So normally they default to natural gas, but you've got LPG, heavy oil, light oil, um, which is obviously most of the kerosene and what have you, coal, um, more fuel options. So you've got wood, coke, biomass, bagasse, wood pellet, um, dry. And we'll, we'll add to this as well. So when hydrogen, 
you know uh, comes out this is this may well be where we put a hydrogen setting in there but um yeah just make sure that you know you're in the the right fuel type so um if i go more fuel options put it onto natural gas select the one i want tick it that will now read natural gas so sometimes people will ring us and say oh this is giving me funny readings and then we we always say look makes sure what what um, fuel type are you in and they say oh yeah no i just used it for oil of course that's why because it will give you different readings than you expect if you're in the wrong fuel type so always make sure you're in the right fuel type for the, for the appliance you're on Units of measurement, you can go in and change, you know, your pressure from millibar to lots of different other pressure measurements if you want to. Obviously, millibar is what we use most of the time. Again, with the temperature, you can Fahrenheit, degrees C, um, you know, efficiency readings, gross or net as standard, uh, you can change it there. Um, and then, yeah, if you've got, like I've got a CO2, um, ambient CO2 instrument, you can have it measured in PPM or CO. Uh, different applications seem to want different things, so you can change it there. This is a nice feature that um, wasn't on our previous models. If you want to zero these sensors, again, connect up your, your flu probe, zero gas sensors, and you used to have to turn the instrument on and off, but it basically does the same thing we did when we started it up. It just zeroes them all again. So if, you, if you're thinking, oh, I need to re-zero it, I'm, you, know, um, you don't need to turn the instrument off to do that. You can literally just go to the, um, the, the option there and, uh, and do it from that, that menu. So I'll just let that quickly do its thing. Um, there you are, they've been re-zeroed, so that's good. Analyzer settings, this is where um, you know, your auto off, so I've got mine set that it turns off after 30 minutes of me not using it. So rather than it draining the battery empty if I, if I sort of forget to turn it off, but you can change that with the ups and downs. So yeah, 25 minutes. If you use it, it won't, obviously every time you press a button, it will go back to 30 minutes. But if you, it's been left unused for 30 minutes, or 25 minutes I'll set it to there you are change it settings saved backlight you can have it bright mid or dim um, I set mine to bright and uh, to be honest the, the battery life's much better on this than the older unit so it's never been a problem um, key click I like it quiet but you can have it so if I check, put it on enabled now you can hear every time I press a button it, it makes a noise I prefer it disabled so it's quiet um, report if you've got a Pro 3 and above, um, then basically you can switch between printer mode, mobile app mode, so Bluetooth mode, or select by keyhold. If you've got select by keyhold, that's what you need to be able to switch by long holding that button between printer and Bluetooth mode. So it's, it's by far the best one to have it. And if you've got a Bluetooth enabled analyzer, put it into select by keyhold, and um, it just makes it much easier to switch between the two. And that's the same. Um, you know, you can have your, your Bluetooth on or off. You can have it on all the time. I, I, only, I have it on by report type, so I've only got my Bluetooth on when I'm in that Bluetooth mode, if that makes sense. Or you can have it off if you don't want it on at all. Um, CO20, okay, that's, that's a bit specialist, but that's if you've got a CO2 monitor for doing ambient CO2, so commercial catering and things like that. You can zero it in fresh air, i.e. 400 ppm, because that's what's in ambient CO2, CO2 in air. Or with a scrubber if you've got a scrubber you can zero it to zero because the scrubber takes out the co2 um, bit of an irrelevance for most people supervisor settings depending on you know um, the settings some companies will stop the supervisor settings but it, and that allows you to go and um, turn on and off the sort of inbuilt personal alarms in these now don't rely on this as a personal alarm because it isn't it just it but it will warn you if there's high levels of co no or co2 uh, I've got all mine enabled, um, but if you if they if you're finding those annoying because sometimes when if you've got an I've got a Knox version here, so more of a commercial analyzer, um, you know it will alarm because the Knox is so toxic. Levels that are permitted in flue gas, you wouldn't want to breathe, but it does sort of alarm you to let you know that you know it's exhausting quite high levels of Knox basically, uh, but you can turn those on and off there. Uh, you can set the time and date. Um, and you can also, um, you can go in oh, and edit your, your name and number from this place as well if you want to put your own details in when you do a printout. This is where you go in and do that. Um, and then there's a, you can password um, change it. I don't want to uh, put a password on mine, but if you do, you can put it in there. You, you know, if you do put a password on it and you forget it, 
we can't get you out of jail without you sending it back to us for a factory reset. So if you're going to use the password, make sure you don't forget what the password is. Um, that's analyzer settings, um, stored logs. So if, if like I did earlier, um, again, up and down, I've got 26 logs in here. I can browse all logs and there they are. Uh, all the logs are done. So I did a, a pressure log earlier um, and then uh, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't save one, but um, yeah, that's, oh, there they are. So yeah, you, you did it different uh, logs, uh, flu log, you can go in and you can reprint it. So as long as you've saved it in the memory, that's where you'll find it to reprint it later. Um, and you can search by log number. If you know the log number, you've caught, kept a record of it, you can go in and literally just put in the log number you want to find um, and then press enter and it will find that log for you. Um, and then you can also log by type. So if you know you only want to find um, a fl your flu logs, if you press click, it will then, uh, how does he do it? Oh, there you are, you hit return, sorry. And now it'll only show the flu logs in the list. So if you get a lot of logs, that can be quite useful. And there you can delete them all if you want to clear your memory. So that's logs. And then a little bit of information about the instruments, so the serial number, the, the, the um, software code. So if you ever need to speak to us, that's sometimes useful information to have. Press escape. That's it. That's everything you could possibly wish to know about the flu gas analyzer in terms of how you use it. Um, let me just connect that again. So a few, a few sort of... Um, bit of a mess here but yeah bear with me so a few points of note if you've got a printer we always say um, give the printer a really good overnight charge when you first get it at least 12 hours the the batteries in this are lithium-ion and they tend to last a very very long time um, and it doesn't matter it's a bit like your, well they're exactly like your mobile phone batteries you can charge them frequently or infrequently you know, for a long time, short period. It doesn't matter. It won't affect the, uh, the performance of the battery or the memory of the battery. In here, there's sort of like the AA types. So that, that type of technology tends to be um, not quite as good as lithium ion. It does, you can eventually get memory effects. So over time, you may find you need to replace the batteries, but they're about a tenner to replace them. So it's, it's not too terrible. But um, to get the maximum life out of them and the best life out of them, always give them a, a good, well, we say 16 hours, but you know, at least 12 hours, ideally a 16 hour charge when you first get them. We can't send the batteries fully charged. Um, we're just not allowed to ship them like that. So do, do give them a full charge when you first get it. Um, and you'll get much better performance out of them over, the, over, the, over its life. Um, same token, keep your analyzer charged. Uh, the new charger, I haven't got it here actually, sorry, it's plugged into my office wall. Um, but it's a USB-C charger, comes with it. Um, again, no harm in giving it a really full charge when you first get it. Um, but we also say, if you know you're not gonna be using it for you know a few weeks, you're going on holiday if, you, if we ever get back to those, um, make sure you don't sort of you know let it run flat, chuck it in your bag and then come back in two or three weeks because we always recommend it it's sort of it's put away with a, a decent store of battery life. Um just sort of performs better that way. Uh what else do you need to know? Standard stuff, don't keep it in your van at night, um, especially in the winter. Um it's an expensive bit of kit. It's electronics, you know it doesn't like being in very cold environments. Um yeah, it's it, it's not ideal, and and obviously there's theft risk as well. So we do recommend you bring them in at night. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what else to tell you really. Um, keeping it charged is really important. Keeping it in the house is really important. Um, yeah, look after it, and it look after you. It's a great bit of kit. So um, yeah, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Oh, um, yeah, so. Any questions, if there's nothing, something I haven't covered you want to know, you know, I'll put up the, uh, the contact details in a second and um, yeah, get in touch and we'll happily help. Hopefully that's useful though. Thanks very much for listening. Oh, <laughs> one thing, sorry, before I go, um, as I say, connect up your flu probe for turning it off. It's, you long hold it to turn it off. There you go. And it will then do its purge, which is why I say it's best to have your flu probe connected when you do it, because it's then purging everything as, as it turns off. Um, well, that's it. It's off, ready to go back in the bag. Everything's got its right place. Happy days. Thanks for, thanks for watching.